Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for this opportunity to share that. Um, but yeah, so for me, uh, those that know me kind of know that um, I, I mean, maybe surprisingly, um, leading group and uh, talking to different people, um, it might catch them off guard. But I, I do identify as an introvert. I identify as somebody who recharges in isolation. And so, um, yeah, it's definitely that outreach uh, piece is something that doesn't come to me naturally. Um, Fortunately, I have a loving wife, Sarah, that it, it is like where her heart's at. She's um, at the forefront when she hears of a need. She wants to be out there. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, good people plugged in with the uh, community. My uh, brother-in-law, Landry, too, he's just he's somebody who's out there and he's uh, willing to go out and serve the those in need. And so um, uh, with the uh, 
protests being relevant around over um, the death of George Floyd and just uh, social injustice um, that's not just a national concern but now a world global concern. Um, it's something that uh, I felt convicted to do something about, and it was something that you know I think sometimes so many giant problems can paralyze us because we just think like what do I where do I even begin and like what do I even do and um, so that's really where I think uh, leaning on community has has been insightful and in, in, uh, for me to get engaged because um, like I mentioned Landry and uh, Sarah they uh, knew there was protests going on um, for this uh, justice and in, uh, in uh, Finley and and when I was first presented with this opportunity, they, you know, um, Landry spoke to me about it, and he said that, you know, he he's a pastor, um, a youth pastor, and he um, was a bit surprised because he just hasn't seen a lot of church presence down there. It's something that hasn't been really uh, um, seen amongst the protesters, and I know it's something that this is an issue that unfortunately has taken, um, has been painted and cast in a political lens, which is unfortunate because the issue isn't about politics. It's about, it's a hard issue, a spiritual issue. And um, it's really an issue that as Christians we're called to respond to. And that's really where um, that conviction piece came, um, hearing uh, Landry's perspective on that. And then just um, discussing with Sarah, her uh, response was just immediately, we have to go out there. We have to go out there and you know, um, talk to people, connect with people, pray for people. And um, my initial response was, you know, excuse, excuse, excuse. Like it was just, um, I, I hesitated and I didn't go out that first day, that first opportunity that was presented. But then when Sarah came back and sort of shared her experience, it sort of, you know, gave me this idea, um, okay, like this is something that, you know, I, I'm feeling this conviction for. It's something that I know God has a uh, place on my heart and, you know, I spend time in the word and I think that um, daily time in the word is so crucial because I just can't read uh, through scripture and hear about a God of justice, a God of love, a God of, that, you know, um, uh, that is for the oppressed and um, hear this uh, opportunity and then remain silent and do nothing. Um, so from there, we ended up going a couple times. The first time was kind of, you know, Learning to, learning to walk it and used to the crowds and sort of just uh, just connecting and having some good conversation. But really what it led to was um, it was really impactful just to go there uh, the second time uh, for the protest, um, can, having more conversation and getting to talk a little bit uh, more to people and get to know their background, like why they're, why they're protesting, what the message and the core identity of what it's all about. Because I, um, I think at the heart of it, um, a lot of people see what's going on and they get a lot of their information from, you know, a Facebook feed or like an article headline and they, and they think like, okay, I, I got it. I, I, I pretty much can sum up what's going on here. But, um, I mean, I just think about the time frame when Jesus walked this earth and, you know, I think if Jesus would have felt that social media, you know, news, if that was the most relevant way to get reach people, I think he would have probably, you know, chosen his time a little bit differently. <laughs> I think I think we just <laughs> Well, it's it can be it's it's a tool, but I think that it's definitely something that we can uh we can um I don't get too far off, but like it, it we can we can use it to No, no. You're totally good, man. Um but we can uh use it to supplement our relationships and we can try to have three dimensional discussions in a 2D format and that can be that can be problematic um but go for it go for it yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. No, you're totally good. And and I think I think that's really really key like that listening component and engaging in those conversations and, and something I've learned that through this like I think a lot of times we get into this place where we hear these stories, we hear so many of these um um, examples of uh, racial discrimination we we don't have categories for that you know like I don't have a category for that um, and it's something that we wrestle with and try to understand and I think that we often are tempted to sort of say okay there there's you know something missing here and we try to uh, you know we have two paths before us where we can take that path that you know Jesus calls us to to hear and listen and, and try to grow and understand and find out what can I do about this? Like what, what how can I serve and make this right? And um, the other path is simply this path where we sort of internalize and sort of uh, regress inward. And, it, and it's almost, um, it's, it's tricky because it's a way to sort of uh, evade any sort of responsibility. And I think it's, it's, it's very uh, good to have those conversations. But, um, but so the second, um, uh, day I was out there, it was really, really, uh, it was really good, and it just kind of shows that um, you know when we take these bold steps of faith, it's not something that one and done. We're going to be out there, and it's going to be like, okay, great, like box checked, or or even like something that we're going to you know uh, do in uh, an amazing way, and it's going to and it's going to you know um, be flawless the first time we try that. It's something we learn and uh, have to stretch ourselves. With. Um, and I kind of mentioned I'm. I'm an um, introvert, so being an extrovert, being out there on on <laughs> the sidewalk and talking to a bunch of people I don't know, like that's totally out of my comfort zone, and it, yeah, very comforting for me. <laughs> it's it's something that like gives me a ton of anxiety, but I knew I was I was compelled to go, and it was something that uh, you know, this before we went out the second time, uh, you know, Sarah was ready to go. She was like almost out the door, and I was like, wait. I haven't done my devotion yet. Let me do my devotion really quick. And I just read through Isaiah 58 and it's just, it speaks into what true fasting is. And um, man, like it, I had been reading through Isaiah like weeks prior. And so this is, this is just one of those God moments where, you know, the puzzle piece just fits perfectly into place. And um, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and it just, it really validated, okay, this is right now some, something that God is calling me to, and I, I have to respond. And, um, so, so the, yeah, that that chapter in particular speaks to uh, true fasting. You know, it's not it's not this day we set aside to not eat and, and say, oh, I'm not I can't eat today because I'm I'm fasting. But it's it's actually serving the oppressed. It's um, uh, untying the cord of the yoke for the oppressed, and it's uh, clothing the naked, the naked, and it's just being out there. It's it's acts of service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, we just think about the the greatest command and Jesus lists like almost almost three commands like God is one, love the Lord your God and love people and it's almost like people you know i think people at the time maybe when they're asking that they're like wait you just named three so which is it and, and his response is yes yes it's it's all of them it, it's uh there's all sides to that one command mm-hmm. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I don't like boasting. So this, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to preface this by, by <laughs> Oh, that's, tr that's true. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> um, but, uh, no. So for me, uh, like I said, totally not comfortable with crowds, but it's something that Sarah mentioned driving down there that, hey, like, it, I think it'd be really cool if we had a prayer circle there and we initiated that. And it was something that I was like, well, you know, no, no, no. And this is after I read Isaiah 58. And if you guys read through that, like, it's like, oh my goodness, you'd want to like do so much to serve. And and so it's like, you can't underestimate that that um, self-desire that, that creeps up in those moments. Um, but so we go out there and um, I'm praying and talking to different people there, um, praying internally at this point. And, and then it gets up, and then one of the leaders of... Uh, the gathering there, um, I, I, I pull aside and say, I say, hey, is it okay with you if I ask people to join in a prayer circle? And he's like, yeah, man, totally. And um, the people we had talk, uh, talking to up at, uh, until that point, you know, a lot of people down there are like totally cool, very like, um, very willing to share their story. You know, they're passionate about what's happening. And it's just, a, I mean, I can't, I can't emphasize this enough. It's a great ministry opportunity. And um, so, with that being said, just, uh, re I, you know, talking to the, the crowd there, reaching up to, you know, a few people at a time, asking if they'd be willing to pray, a lot of people were. Like, there was very few people that weren't, weren't willing to pray, and we gathered in a circle, and it was something that, like, you know, I take no credit for because, again, I just would be totally paralyzed with fear and anxiety in that moment. But, but I tell you, like, it says in that Isaiah 58 that um, in true fasting, you'll call out to, to the Lord and he will say, here I am. And I, and I felt that, like, I can't, like, I can count on one hand how many times I felt this calming peace in this moment. And it's really just this validation that God's saying, Sam, you're exactly where you need to be right now, here, right now. And it's, it was just really, really powerful. And, um, so, so leading into prayer, um, you know, I, t I took an opportunity just to, uh, you know, make sure to emphasize the need and, and just, uh, I shared, uh, names of people that I wanted to lift up in prayer that I know have experienced this, uh, you know, racial uh, prejudice and this, um, persecution. And, um, I asked people if they're comfortable, you know, say, say people's name, we're going to, we're going to dedicate this prayer to them. And 
a lot of people were, and it was just really touching to not just not just hear, not to see stats, not just to see uh, statistics, or even or even people from across the nation, uh, you know, a uh, uh, picture, but to actually hear people. Yeah, the, uh, and it's it was just really impactful leading into that prayer piece, and um, just you know, I I told them you know my name and let them know like, hey, I'm Sam. I believe that. Um, um, in a God that loves everybody, that is for justice. And, um, you know, just, just making sure to be that light, to make sure not just to take an opportunity to, you know, pray and lift up this, this uh, cause, which is so important, but make sure to realize that, like, God is moving through us in this, and God is with us when we take a stand in this. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> right. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, I I appreciate that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I would say that, yeah, I think that God is constantly involved and constantly working uh, to shape us and guide us. And I think that... Um, I mean, I mean, there's so many different ways uh, for this for this instance in particular. Like, you know, I I, I think that there's a lot of uh, you know 
uh, previous uh, trials that I've faced that has led me down down this road where I'm I've really been entrenched in this scripture about um, God speaking to the fatherless, the the orphans, and the oppressed, and and uh, yeah, yeah. So 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 uh, my wife and I are have are called to adopt, and it's something that we're navigating. Yeah, and it's it's something that. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're navigating and we're working for, but it's something that, uh, you know, with that decision comes a lot of, uh, or with that one decision comes a lot of, you know, myriad of other decisions about international domestic and, and so forth. Um, and, and so it's really something that just exploring the, the less fortunate, like it's, it's been this constant, um, you know, message on my heart that's really, uh, um, kind of helped reveal itself in a lot of ways. But like in this instance, it was something that, you know, I, I, I couldn't remain silent and I couldn't, um, as a Christian, you know, hear what's going on and not want to have those conversations, not want to engage in the, that um, discussion with, um, you know, the protesters down there. But also, like you're saying, um, like a neighbor or a friend that you know that um, is a minority or, or just people that, um, you know, I think that you, you just kind of, this is a good opportunity to take a look at your uh, close circle and see like, okay, is, is everybody in my circle? Like, like, are, are they talking like me? Are they, do we all have kind of the, are we all the same? <laughs> right. Right. Cause odds are we're, we're kind of maybe, Ne- you know, nesting in this comfort area, and we maybe need to start looking more outward at, at people we can reach out to and, and grow and connect with. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Mhm. Yep. Yep. Right. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. 